the search for romantic love is essentially this desire for being a child again, a baby that where everything is being taken care of. It's basically this completely open with for with someone being completely able to be vulnerable and everything's going to be taken care of. That is what what romantic love or what the desire for romantic love is. It's basically the desire to be careless again, careless again without any pressure, completely open and just everything is perfect. Now that is. Uh, I'm sorry, we're adults. That's not going to come back ever. And uh, there will be maybe a short phase where you idealize the person that you're going to notice. Oh, they're a person. They're a person. They're with flaws. And then you notice all, all kinds of flaws. It's literally like a like a like a like a magnifying glass. The longer you stay with the person, the more flaws you're going to see. The more things are going to piss you off about, about the other person, of course. And the more things are going to piss them off about you. It's just what it is. You see. So at that point, you gotta you gotta define the nature of the relationship. You gotta define what the relationship is actually about, and to what extent you're gonna tolerate each other's bullshit. That's really what it is, and it's more like a contract than we believe, you know. But the bottom line is, you don't get into magic in order to. Um, what's the word? You don't get to get into magic to. Um, to be more vulnerable, you get into magic in order to get what the, what the fuck it is that you want. And remember, I, I made that distinction between magic and, and spirituality before. Magic is not spirituality. Magic is nothing but a technology that gets you what you want. It's a reality manipulation. Spirituality is different from that. And of course, you can have spiritual beliefs that prevent you from using magic to put a love spell on someone. But there's definitely no natural law that's going to stop you from doing it. Besides that, see... Um, I believe we live in a very competitive world, you know, and if, if that's for the guys, you know, if, if that one woman that you're in love with, like, what are the chances that you're going to get her because you're competing with other guys too? Like if she's that woman, you're definitely competing with other men for her. So what's the, like, you know, I mean, what's different. I mean, it is a little bit different, but I mean, you would use anything at your disposal to impress her more, to give her more, to make her, to make sure that she likes you more than other guys. No? Yeah. It, I'm sorry, life is not, uh, life is not a Hollywood movie where everything works out in the end because you're nice or something like that. That's not how life works, unfortunately. Yeah. You know? Always burst in those bubbles. <laughs> The way that I kind of viewed it, I'm like, okay, so we could have the the love spell you put on somebody, but what if you like, you know, took that instead of like putting the love spell on somebody, you focused that self love on yourself, and you became a powerful point of attraction for something that would just I'll say like more organically would be magnetized you just through say something like the law of attraction, because now you're. Um, okay. Now, yeah. Okay. I have a question. Let's yeah. say you get into a relationship with a guy, you personally. You get in a yeah. relationship with a guy. Um, you're you're living together. So your lives are in a in a way intertwined. You know that men will take advantage of, of sexual opportunities. Now, if he's a guy that is attractive, he's gonna have other uh, opportunities to have sex. You probably wouldn't like that. You would probably call that cheating, right? So he would be cheating on you. So no matter how attractive you are, if your man can cheat on you, he will do that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That is the reality of life. Yeah. You know? And uh, so yeah, you you can definitely you can definitely make yourself as attractive as you want, but it's not gonna, it's not it's gonna satisfy him for yeah. good. It's just an unfortunate, it's just a fact, you know, it's just a fact of life. Yeah. And, and, and he like, doesn't even, he doesn't even love these other women. It's literally like, it's, it's just, it's just literally, uh, you know, and I'm not saying that women don't do that. Of course, women do do that too. So it's just, uh, what I'm saying is, but if you had the, the opportunity to make sure that they only have sex with you and only want to have sex with you. And magic could give you that. Wouldn't you use it? 
That's a hard question because I can sit on my high horse here, not in that opportunity or not in that position with an emotional attachment to somebody, you know, and be like, no, I would never. Um, but I, I haven't, I haven't actually experienced that the way that I'd like map things out in my mind is that I'd want a partner that I had open and honest communication with and going into something, knowing that they have needs I can't always fulfill. So yeah, well, okay. But yeah, then, I, I get it. But um, that's not always ideal. That can cause problems too. But once again, there will be no honest conversation about that topic. Robin. There will never be a 100% honest conversation with, somebody that you're going to have be a, have a relationship with that is not going to happen why deception is the name of the game seduction is always deception and you know that better than me you're a woman so um when you get into a relationship with someone you will not have an honest conversation with them you will tell them how you honestly about how you feel about other people because now you're like a group together, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be 100% honest with them, ever. <clears throat> At least that's, that's my experience. RIP ignorance. <laughs> that's not, that's not my intention. <laughs> that's not my intention, but it is, it is what it is. I mean, How many times have you have, have you been with a person for years and years and years and then they show a completely different aspect of their psychology or psych, uh, of their personality? And you're like, who the fuck is that person? Right? Who the fuck is that? So. Yeah, well, people change so much, too. Like it's people yeah, are people, fluid. More than anything, people are self-serving, which doesn't make them bad people. Just make some people that are uh, self-serving out of necessity and they will do what works for them. It's a, it's a game of genetic, genetic material, especially when it comes to relationships. Yeah, I know there's a spiritual part to it. However, why does a guy take advantage of that opportunity when he can? Because it's, it's, a genet it's an opportunity to spread, his, to spread his genes. You know, that's what. And for a woman, it's an opportunity to, to expand the different types of sperm that she can get the different types of genetic material you see so if i'm getting in a relationship with a woman i'm not i'm not an idiot of course i understand that she finds other men attractive absolutely however am i going to allow that and now playing the game very smart because i am very smart of course i'm going to prevent her from taking advantage of that and one of the ways of doing that is magic i'm going to use magic to prevent her from doing that and even further i'm going to prevent her from even finding them attractive through magic and uh, I don't believe any other bullshit anymore. I believe humans are mostly animals. And uh, we're very, very deceptive animals. Nasty. And I don't know if people believe it or not. I don't care. I mean, live, people can live in their illusions all they want, you know, but I choose reality because I found that the more I live in reality, the stronger I become. It's much, it's, it's so refreshing to finally not having to lie to yourself anymore. And this, this, this gut instinct that you have doesn't have to be repressed anymore. Your gut is telling you that your gut is telling you that all the time. You know exactly what life is about. You know exactly how people are. And because there's this programming of um, romantic love and all this bullshit that doesn't match reality, you know, the, the gut instinct is repressed. But your instinct is is very very wise, very intelligent. Yeah. Ouch! The truth hurts. <laughs> it's 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 so hard to wrap your mind around this one because it's a thing that is like marketed to us so heavily, like the most. It's the the biggest lie that we've been sold. Yeah, it's for the peasants. Because that's how you control them. Yeah. You know, all the women out there that, that um, say that they want that, as soon as they got a man completely, they start finding him unattractive. Anyways, you know, they, they, they look for somebody else. They look for that, for that guy that is, uh, that is different. 
I guess, uncontrollable. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, only a fool believes in, 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 in blind love, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's just, that's just the conclusion that I've, came to, uh, I've come to. My Pisces heart is crying. <laughs>